If you're watching this, then you're probably just as confused as me when I first saw the 2024 Porsche 911 ST. I immediately thought, oh boy, here's another super extra special sauce limited edition 911. Honestly, I wonder who started this everything is special war. Like, was it McLaren? Because I feel like every McLaren is a special one as well. Sound off in the comment section. I'm being for real. Anyway, in order for us to understand why the 2024 911 ST exists, we must dive into some brief history, which I found out that there's history behind it. Oh, just FYI, I'm not going to use chassis codes like 992 because I'm not a nerd. NERD! All the cars I'll be talking about are either from the year 2024, 1964, or 1969. Nobody knew this, but there was actually a 911S back in 1969. In fact, some of those were crafted into purpose-built race cars. And these limited race cars were called the 911 ST. Keep in mind that there's no slash. That's what makes the old car different than the new one. Production was halted, of course, in 1972, with less than 25 examples created. To make matters more confusing, the 911 ST can be seen as the modern 911R. Or they basically took the S from sport and then the T from touring and combined them. Thus, the ST was born. I really don't see how either matters since the 911 is a sports car that you can drive. The 911 from back in the day also comes with a manual only. Now you might be wondering, why do they have 63 on them? It's actually pretty crazy because the original 911 was shown in 1963, but it wasn't produced until 1964. Same thing for the 2024 911 ST. It was shown in 2023, but model year and production is for 2024. If I were a GT3 owner, I would be slightly furious. I'm not gonna lie. The 911 ST is basically, and potentially a more raw GT3, GT3 RS. For example, it uses the same engine from the GT3. It looks similar to the GT3 Touring. It has lighter panels, a lighter clutch and flywheel, and uses the carbon doors from the GT3 RS. The ST also has less sound deadening to shave off even more weight. Like, I don't think you understand. In most normal circumstances, aren't the track versions of a car supposed to be the lightest? I think Porsche did this on purpose, so I can make a video about it and confuse people. Back to the question of isn't it basically a GT3? Yes, but it's lighter, louder, more expensive, and probably more rare. Why not just get a GT3? Because the ST is really extra special sauce after all. You know what's also crazy? People are typically more cautious driving super expensive cars and the GT3 is already super expensive, but the ST is more expensive than that. Like, I really don't get it, man. Here comes the question everyone was wondering about. Who is this car for? It's a bit tricky because since it's a limited production car, it will obviously be for prestigious and loyal Porsche collectors. I mean customers. As you know, the GT3 cars only come in PDK, but the ST only comes with the manual. It's basically a manual raw GT3, which was built for the track, built for the street? 
I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the ST is like 100,000 more than a GT3 and more expensive than a GT3 RS. And in case you forgot, this is a car built for the street. It's less track focused, but costs more money. Like, ugh. but wait, it gets better. The current GT3 Touring has a limited production run too. And it's almost impossible to get either a GT3 or a GT3 RS. And when you do find one, you're gonna pay over MSRP. Oh, you thought I was done? Not only do you have to buy the GT3 or GT3 RS over sticker, you are most likely required to have bought previous Porsche cars. I can't even afford these cars, but I am mad for the recent Porsche customers who can afford them. Dude, I'd be mad than the mug. But yeah, this car's for anyone who can obtain one, to put it short. It only exists because Porsche loves money and people will buy 911s. The 2024 911 ST is based off of a special 911 race car unveiled in 1969, and it was made to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the 911 in general, hence the 63 number on the door. That's when Porsche first showed it to the world. And of course, it wouldn't be super special if it didn't have a limited production run, which is 1,963 units. Okay, bye!